Hello and welcome back to the stars everybody welcome back to Starfield today we're going to be taking a look at the micro gun this is this game's mini gun I mean technically it's a micro gun because of the caliber it shoots but it whatever this for all intents and purposes is the mini gun of this game it has all the characteristics of a mini gun and all of the pros and cons that come with that let's talk about the base stats and the pros and cons so for the base stats of the micro gun this one does nine damage per shot which is okay, this is full auto, and it is only full auto, as you would kind of expect, it'd be really weird if this thing was semi-auto. This one fires the 7.77 millimeter round, this is one of the most common rounds in the game, probably the most common round in the game, and it's shared amongst multiple weapons, it's shared amongst this one, the Eon, the Beowulf, Kodama, Grendel, there's a lot of weapons that fire the 7.77, it's also super common to buy from merchants, usually merchants have a couple hundred of these rounds laying around. This one holds 320 rounds inside of it, as you would kind of hope it holds a lot of shots for a minigun. This one has a 350 rate of fire, which is a very high rate of fire. I think it's the second highest. I believe only the Magstorm actually fires faster than this one. This one has 40 meters of effective range, the same as most rifles do, which can be pretty good, although even at 40 meters, it can be a little bit difficult to keep this on target unless your target is really big. This one has low accuracy as you would kind of expect. It definitely makes up with the amount of bullets it fires. It's accuracy through volume, not accuracy per shot. And it does get more accurate the longer you hold this down. However, you're gonna be chewing through ammo a whole lot faster that way too. This one does weigh a lot as you'd expect, coming in at 11.4. So it is a very hefty gun, it's one of the heaviest weapons in the game. And for the basic pros of the micro gun, this one does have really high damage per second as you'd expect with a really high rate of fire, it doesn't really matter how high the damage is, the, the DPS is going to be there. This one is one of the more early game heavy weapons that you can get. You can buy micro guns or find micro guns laying around like New Atlantis without too much trouble. You could also steal them and then buy them back or steal them, sell them, buy them back. That way they don't count as stolen that can be pretty useful and this does hold a lot of bullets in it so the sustained fire from this thing is really really good for the cons of this though there is actually quite a few one is the low range slash not very accurate it, its range is fine and its accuracy can be fine it totally depends on the size of target that you're firing at though if you're firing at a gigantic dinosaur the accuracy is fine because you don't need to be all that accurate if you're firing at something smaller at long range this one does become not the most accurate weapon in the game and you're probably going to chew through ammo really fast that's another major con to this weapon is that it eats through ammo really really quick it's also probably the worst or one of the worst weapons if you want to get the most value per shot out of it and then another major downside to this is that it is very heavy you don't really want to be carrying around too many micro guns although they are worth a decent amount so it's not terrible to pick them up they're just not the most cost efficient to the weight though, or at least the most value to weight ratio. On my heavy weapons tier list, I believe I put the micro gun into B tier and I would still probably keep it into B tier. It can be pretty good. The damage per second is nothing to scoff at. So long as you have bullets, it can be really good. If you don't have bullets, if you're early on into the game, then I would not recommend this one unless you're specifically going with just a heavy weapons build. In which case, this is the only weapon that's going to be firing the 7.77, and in that case, it's actually probably going to be a pretty decent weapon for you. But if you're not doing that and you're going with a general build that can use anything, something like the Grendel, the Kodama, or the Beowulf would be a much better option than this one, or even the Eon if you're going with a pistol build. So let's talk about some mods and where that would kind of change it in the tier list. So for mods, starting out of the barrel, we either have a long barrel or a stabilizing barrel as an upgrade to the standard barrel. I went with a long barrel on mine, giving me better range, better recoil, and better accuracy. The stabilizing barrel can give you all that, but it does make the weapon weigh even more. So pick whichever one of these you would like. They're both pretty good. If you want long sustained fire, the stabilizing barrel is probably better for you. You. Then for a laser, I'd recommend the recon laser sight. This one is just an upgrade over the regular laser sight, and both these are an upgrade over having just no laser. This does make it so you're more accurate, which does help the minigun quite a bit, so I would recommend you throw one of these on there. However, if you can't get it for whatever reason, it's not a huge deal. Then for a muzzle, funny enough, you can actually put a suppressor on the micro gun, and it does benefit from that because the sneak perk lets you have more damage if you have a suppressor on your gun. You can do sneak attacks with this weapon, but it's not very efficient. It's definitely not the best sneaking around weapon, but just simply due to the fact that sneak does exist and gives you more damage, the suppressor is usually the better option over the compensator. Unless, of course, you're not going with sneak and then the compensator is a fine option to pick whichever one you would like. 
For a stock and grip, we only have one option with the tactical grip, and it just makes the weapon lighter and gives you all around more buffs. Throw that one on there if you can. If not, not a huge deal. Then for a magazine or battery, we do have some options with the minigun, and I'd recommend one of two of them. Either go with the tactical magazine, which makes you a faster reload, which is still not fast on the minigun, even if you take that, plus you have the reload speed perk. You're still not reloading this thing very quickly. It does have a lot of downtime, so you are going to have to take cover or throw the armor piercing rounds on there because that will get you more damage towards basically everything. And that's what I put into mine. There is the option of a small magazine, but I really don't think that's a great option. If you wanted a smaller magazine and a weapon that could do basically the micro guns job better, then either the full auto Grendel with some sort of legendary effects or the Kodama would be a whole lot better option. And you might as well just be using those weapons over the micro gun, unless again, you're just going with a heavy weapons build, in which case maybe it could be useful, but armor piercing or tactical magazine would be my two choices. Then for an internal, we have three options. We have high powered, high velocity, or bullet hose. Bullet hose is unique just to the micro gun. I don't believe any other weapon gets that. So high power gets you more damage per shot. That one can be useful, although the minigun is already fine on damage. Having more damage per shot is good for a high DPS weapon like this though. High velocity gives you longer range and better accuracy. I wouldn't really recommend this one for the minigun. You're not going to be using the minigun at super long ranges. You're going to be using it at fairly close to medium range. Bullet hose is the one that I picked and bullet hose makes it so you have increased accuracy, range, and rate of fire. I really enjoy this one because I find it really fun to have even more DPS on the minigun. This does help if you have more bullets. If you don't have very many bullets and you're trying to get the most out of this, then I would recommend high powered. High powered would probably be the best of the options, but bullet hose is like the most fun one, at least in my opinion for me. And with all of these attachments onto the minigun, assuming you have ammo, I might move this one up a tier to A tier. It's going to be on the very low end of A tier because it does eat through bullets very quick. It's not as good as like the Kodama or the Beowulf that's using the same rounds. Even if you want to do a full auto Beowulf or a full auto Kodama, they're still a lot better per shot than the micro gun is unless you just want that really high amount of sustained fire. So it is probably one of the better heavy weapons, but it's still not that incredible for a general weapon. There are two unique variants of this too that we need to talk about, so let's go over each of them. The very first one is called the N67 Smart Gun. I believe that this is a reference to the Smart Gun from Aliens. Too bad it doesn't actually change it. I would love to see an MG42 looking machine gun in this. I think it would look really cool in Starfield. This one you can just buy in New Atlantis. This one you can buy from the UC. It's at the same place where you can buy like the Rapid Shot Breach, which is another really good early game weapon. And this weapon does have one unique effect and it has two modifications on it. It has the compensator on it and armor piercing rounds, which are both pretty good. That's better than a standard micro gun. Armor piercing rounds is definitely the selling point here. And for the unique effect, it has shattering on it. Shattering is basically armor piercing on top of this. So you have armor piercing rounds plus more armor piercing. You basically just ignore armor or ignore a huge portion of armor whenever you're using this gun. And that does make it actually a pretty tempting option if you were to do a heavy weapons only run to where you wanted to grab something like this. And this one would probably be one of the best options to get early on. For anybody else, I don't know if it would be worth the money. It is kind of expensive and it does eat through ammo quickly. Ammo is usually one of the bigger issues at the start of these type of games where you can't buy a whole lot of it because you just don't have money. You can't be killing a whole lot of people because you don't have gear to do that. Or you're just impatient like me where you don't want to sit there and wait for shops to reset so that you can then go and buy more ammo from them. And then our second unique micro gun is the X989 micro gun. This one you get at the very end or very close to the very end of the UC Vanguard quest. Once you get to Londinia, you talk to the veteran there and he will give you this micro gun. This one can be unique though because it can have multiple different effects on it. I always thought it was a legendary one, but it is just set as a rare one, but it can go all the way up to a legendary just because it is a quest reward. So this one can have multiple effects, however it is always guaranteed to have one effect. This one also has modifications on it. This one has a long barrel, a laser sight, a tactical grip, and a tactical magazine. All of those are pretty decent on a micro gun. That's actually really good to have. This one also comes with the exterminator effect. This gets you 30% more damage towards all alien life forms. And that can be pretty good. That is generally one of the better effects in the game, especially if you want to take the micro gun to different planets, farm for XP there. This one can work really, really well. Like I said, this one can be a legendary weapon though and have multiple effects. I managed to get an exterminating one with lacerating and with a skip shot on it. So it was an extremely strong minigun then and definitely worth getting. So should you use the minigun? If you're using a heavy weapons build, then I would say yeah. If you're not using a heavy weapons build, then I would say maybe. 
I wouldn't really recommend it over the Beowulf or the Kodama. I think those two are better in basically every role that the minigun could be in, where the Kodama is better for DPS and better for ammo, as well as it has the bleed on it by default, which is really nice. And the Beowulf is just probably the best use of the 7.77 round because it kind of just fits every role as a general purpose weapon. Microgun can be a lot of fun, and I really do enjoy using it from time to time. Tell me your thoughts on the Microgun down in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. Thank you guys so very much for watching this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will talk to you guys next time. Till then, stay cool and bye-bye everyone.